Hi, in this video I'm going to continue on industrial chemistry and here I will be talking about green chemistry. So what is green chemistry? Well, green chemistry is a branch of chemistry where it emphasizes on reducing the use of dangerous reactant or reducing the use of dangerous reaction pathway in industrial process, hoping to protect our environment and achieve sustainable development. Now, there are 12 principles of green chemistry. So let me talk about it. First of all, prevention of waste production. This one should be obvious. The second one, atom economy. I will talk about it after I go through all 12 principles. Third one, less hazardous synthesis. Basically, like I said, reduce the use of dangerous reaction pathway. Number four, designing safer chemicals. Basically, you try to use a safer alternatives to replace the reactants or any chemicals that we use in an existing reaction pathway. Number five, safer auxiliary substance. Now, what is a safer auxiliary substance? Now, you know for an industrial process, we have the reactant forming the products. There could be some waste products. However, there is a lot of different other chemicals that we need to add to the industrial process to achieve a successful synthesis. That perhaps include catalysts, that also include a suitable solvent or some kind of a stabilizer or some kind of uh, emulsifier, mixer, surfactant. Now all these things are essential to successful industrial process and all this collectively are referred to as auxiliary substance. Now, number six, energy efficiency. So it is often related to the reaction condition. You know that when the reaction condition is extreme, meaning high temperature or high pressure, then very likely that energy is lost to the surrounding. That makes the use of energy inefficient. So the milder, the better the higher the energy efficiency. Number seven, use of renewable resources. Now, do you remember before we talk about the methanol synthesis? Now, methanol, in most of the industry, we make methanol from syn gas, and syn gas is coming from natural gas. So natural gas is the raw material, and you can tell it is non-renewable. However, we, ha we can also make methanol from the gasification of biomass. Now, biomass are considered as renewable, so by using uh, biomass to produce methanol instead of uh, natural gases, well, it considered as green. Now, number eight, reducing derivatives. Now, what is a derivatives? Let's just say we have a chemical reaction involving a reactant with more than one functional group and what we want is to change one of the two functional groups only. So to achieve that we will add a derivative compound to protect one of the functional group while leaving another functional group to react. So these derivatives can protect the functional group preventing it from undergoing any unwanted reactions. Now we try to minimize the use of derivatives because the use of these derivatives may often causing pollutions to environment. Down here, catalysis. Catalysis, of course, uh, can speed up the reaction. While the catalyst is not being consumed, then we do not need to constantly replace or replenish the catalyst. That definitely uh, greening the process. Designing for degradation, so the uh, products or the byproducts are designed that, that can degrade it uh, in a much faster time as uh, the conventional product. A lot of the plastic nowadays are designed as biodegradable plastic, so uh, they can be degraded in the environment much faster than uh, the conventional ones. Uh, Real-time analysis for pollution prevention, basically to prevent pollution. And lastly, prevention of accidents. This is uh, very obvious. Now, these are 12 principles. Do we have to memorize them? Well, we don't. For me, I feel like number one, number two, number three, number uh, six, number seven, number nine. Uh, these are considered as uh, principles that is more useful. What do you mean by more useful? 
because uh, in the past paper, very often they will ask you to compare uh, process A and process B and asking you which one is greener. Is it A or B? Now, if you want to explain why one reaction is greener than another, you need to make use of these uh, principles of green chemistry. And very often, these highlighted ones are used in explaining why. Okay? Now, down here, atom economy, something new to you, but it's pretty easy actually. Now, atom economy basically means uh, how many atoms from the reactants can, at the end, ends up in the product, okay? Is it all the atoms from the reactant ends up as the product, or is it some atom actually end up as byproduct and therefore wasted? Uh, this is what we are concerning. Now, for example, here, we want to make this uh, bromobutane, okay? And you notice that the C4, the four carbon, is coming from uh, the butane 1O, also, the 9 H's is coming from butane 1O. The B out here is coming from the sodium bromide. And the rest of the atoms are wasted, right? So here, uh, this OH is wasted, Na is wasted, H2SO4 is wasted, okay? And they are end up being the byproducts, okay? So here, when we calculate the atom economy, we will put the relative formula mass of our decided product, which is this one, right? Okay. And then over the total formula mass of all the reactants. So we are talking about this, 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 okay, together. All right. So you notice that the numerator would be uh, the relative formula mass of uh, bromobutane, and the denominator will be these three added together. Multiply by 100% and then we get uh, around 50%. Okay? So what does it mean by uh, 50% atom economy? That means even you have a 100% yield, even though there is no loss of uh, reagent, no loss of product, no error, no spillage of liquid, your experiment was done perfectly, still only half of the mass of the reactant ends up being the product. Okay? So Therefore, we say that this atom economy is quite poor and it is not a green process from the atom economy perspective. Okay? Now, um, make sure you know the difference between atom economy and percentage yield. Okay? For percentage yield, it's more of an experimental perspective. Whether you carry out your experiment with enough precaution, uh, is there any inevitable loss of reactant or product during perhaps transfer of solution or uh, uh, something like that? The, the nature of the reaction where uh, it is reversible, then you can never achieve 100%, isn't it? So it's more of an experimental and, and uh, the nature of the reaction itself. But for atom economy, it's very simple, very straightforward. We just look at the balanced state chemical equation. We want to check to see how many uh, atoms from the reactant ends up as our desired product, just like that. So make sure you can tell the tif difference. Okay. Now at the back, we have a practice question uh, focusing on atom economy. I can do one for you here, Haber process. Now, if you're smart, you realize that it is 100%, 100%, because you only got one product. When you get one product, that means all the atoms from the reactant must end up at the product, isn't it? But still, we try to calculate it. Percentage atom economy equals to uh, 17 times 2 over 14 times 2 plus 2 times 3 times 100%, which is equal to 100%. Okay? Now, so pause the video, attempt the question yourself. Now let's check. So here, catalytic hydrogenation of omega-3 fatty acid. Again, if you're smart, this one must be 100% because you have one product only. But still, we want to fit in some steps. So percentage atom economy equals to this one is 480. This one is 468. This one is 2 times 6. So times 100%, which gives you, again, 100%. Okay? Now down here, synthesis of methanol, first of all, perhaps we need to combine the two equations together. 
carbon monoxide will be cancelled out. Uh, hydrogen 2 will be cancelled out here, and this one, there should be one hydrogen left. So CH4, H2O, CH3OH, and one more of hydrogen. Okay? So we are making methanol, right? So percentage AE equals to methanol relative formula mass, which is 32 divided by here 16 plus 18 times 100%, which gives you 32 divided by 34, 94.1%. Okay? So this is how you calculate the atom economy, very simple. Now you may ask, hey, what do you mean by high atom economy? It's 94.1% high. Now what I can tell you is that 100% is high. And other than 100%, it all boils down to comparison. So there is no scale or guidelines as to what percentage of atom economy is, is considered as high. We, we, we can't say it this way, okay? It's always based on comparison, okay? All right, at the back, we have some uh, case study, some actual industrial process where uh, the principle of green chemistry is uh, employed, uh, see how it can be improved from time to time, okay? Now down here, we want to make ethanol acid or acetic acid, okay? Now, the very old method is to do direct oxidation of butane or naphtha, so direct oxidation of hydrocarbon forming uh, ethanol acid and other things, okay? Uh, here, Monsanto process is a better, more improved version. Here, we make use of methanol and carbon monoxide, again, forming the acetic acid, okay? Now, you see, both process utilize the same condition. Also, uh, they, both of them use catalysts, okay? Now, when we talk about atom economy, definitely Monsanto process wins because it has 100% atom economy. This one, direct oxidation, will produce many other substances like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, or some smaller hydrocarbon or smaller organic compound. Okay, so low atom economy. When comparing energy efficiency, Monsanto process uh, has a better energy efficiency, probably because the fractional distillation of uh, hydrocarbon is quite inefficient. It requires so much heating to do so. So catalysis, both of them use catalysts, which is good. We can't compare the efficiency of the catalyst uh, in, in DSC level, of course. Now, uh, renewable resources, both of them are not using renewable resources. So from the green chemistry perspective, this is not a good idea. Despite the fact that methanol can be produced from biomasses, it only constitutes a very small portion that is actually negligible. Now down here, other consideration. So when we talk about yield, the first method has a very low yield, whereas the second method has a very high yield. Probably because of the reaction between methanol and carbon monoxide under the action of a certain catalyst is very specific, so it will make a single product and not, uh, not many side products. But this one, you see, you have a mixture of hydrocarbon simply doing oxidation with oxygen. Probably it will come up with a, a mixture of different products. Okay, so this one has a very low yield. Okay, so here the conclusion is Monsanto process is considered as greener than the direct oxidation. Okay. However, it is not the greenness. Okay, this one down here is uh, even greener than Monsanto process. So here we are making acetic acid from ethanol using an oxidative fermentation of crops. Okay. Now you notice the raw material is crops, which is renewable. So of course this one is very green because it uses renewable feedstock. Okay, this is the, already the first advantages. Secondly, it has a good energy efficiency because the reaction takes place at ambient condition. So it's uh, maybe 35 degrees Celsius, 1 atm. Uh, at such a temperature, heat does not lose 
very readily. Okay. Number three, byproduct is non-harmful water. So only water being the byproduct is produced it, which is uh, not harmful. Number four, the use of catalyst, which is enzyme. Okay. Here, enzyme for microorganism. Uh, accepting as a biological catalyst. Down here, safer solvents and auxiliary. Uh, solvents for uh, reaction involving microorganism. It is mostly, mostly water based with uh, some buffering uh, solute, but um, it is definitely not toxic. Uh, auxiliary, uh, in order to make, make sure the uh, Microorganism can grow and thrive, and to con at the same time controlling their population. I believe that there are some uh, chemicals added into it to ensure uh, rapid growth, but not overgrown. Okay. Uh, but at the end, you see something bad to this method is that it has a low atom economy because of the production of water, so it decreases the atom economy. Okay. But for me, I don't think it is very uh, problematic. But if we stick to the principle of green chemistry from the perspective of atom economy, this one is not that green. Okay. Other consideration uh, is that this process, even though it is so green, but still has some drawbacks. First of all, it has a very low yield, probably because the microorganism can make use of other metabolic pathway to process the reactant or to even process the product. Okay. Low production rates because we use ambient condition, the temperature will not be very high, so the rates of reaction will be relatively slow when compared to a lot of industrial process taking place at like 200 degrees Celsius or so. Now, also here, there's a limitation to the concentration of ethanol used. Of course, if you want to have a faster reaction, you go for highly concentrated ethanol, plus you don't have to replenish that often, isn't it? However, in this case, we can only use at most 15% of ethanol because any percentage of ethanol beyond 15 will be able to kill the microorganism. So, therefore, we need to use a relatively low uh, concentration of ethanol, again, leading to a low production rate. Okay? At the back, we have a practice question. You know the drill, pause the video, attempt the question, then resume the video and check the answers. Okay, let's have a look. Hexane dioic acid, also known as atypic acid, uh, is uh, used to manufacture nylon polymer. Okay, and there are two different methods to make uh, atypic acid. Now, A, state the type of reaction in the synthesis of atypic acid from cyclohexene. A, alkene to carboxylic acid. Did we learn it? Actually, we don't. A, so how do we know? Well, at least you know. Atypic acid is a carboxylic acid, that means at least it has two oxygen atoms. Cyclohexane, on the other hand, has no oxygen atom at all. So you're changing from no oxygen atom to having two oxygen atoms. This is very likely to be oxidation. So this one, you can put down oxidation, or you can put down redox reaction. Okay? Now for part B, draw the structure of atypic acid. Now, atypic acid is also known as hexane, dioic acid. So you are drawing uh, the structure of hexane, dioic acid. So basically it is uh, it is like this, okay? It's a cis carbon straight chain uh, with carboxyl group at the two ends of the chain. Now, both methods are considered as environmentally unfriendly. Explain briefly. So, of course, it has to do with the, uh, the reagent that it uses. For method A, it uses oxidizing Cl2O72 minus, and B, it uses uh, oxidizing and corrosive. On HNO3. Okay? So basically, using hazardous chemicals is always unfriendly to the environment. Now, down here, we have an uh, upgraded or more uh, mature development of 
ATP acid from cyclohexane is a hydrogen peroxide. Okay, and there is also catalyst. Suggest two advantages of using this method to synthesize ATP acid with reference to the principle in green chemistry. First of all, of course, use catalyst to speed up reaction. And secondly, this one could be difficult knowing that we are using hydrogen peroxide as the, 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 the reactant or the oxidizing agent. You know, hydrogen peroxide, it is reduced to oxygen. Okay, so it will produce harmless H2O and O2 okay, byproducts. Okay, so that's it for the video.